И еще вот летит сейчас. Летит, летит. Сейчас летит. С той стороны где-то. Вот, да, 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 правильно, по всему. Не видно его. Вот он, вот он, вот он, вижу, вижу. И еще вот летит сейчас. Летит, летит. Сейчас летит. С той стороны где-то. Вот, да, 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 правильно, по всему. Не видно его. Вот он, вот он, вот он, вижу, вижу. Propagandist and Z-War correspondent Maxim Kalashnikov announced the deterioration of the state of the Russian occupation army fighting against Ukraine. He mentioned the terrible supply of groups and cases of reprisals by commanders against their own soldiers. We are having a difficult conversation here today on Kursk soil. The topic is very painful. You can see for yourself, especially after the death of Ernest and Goodwin's group, we are in a very bad shape with the armed forces. We literally do not have an army, but a militia, which sometimes lives only thanks to the help of civilian volunteers. We have to raise money for an army. What is happening to our army? It is a difficult feeling, frankly speaking. A friend who has now gone on a contract writes that something terrible is happening with supplies and training, Kalashnikov said. According to him, defeatism is overwhelming Russian ultra-patriots. Where have we ended up? Is there a future in this war? I look at what is happening and you know, the winners in war do not look like this. There is one reason that is leading the military actions to a positional dead end. This is the collapse of the system of state governance in the country. A stream of simply black news, negativity. We just saw strikes on the missile arsenals in Taropets. There was a strike in Tikhoretsk, also on ammunition. Everyone is already discussing the unsuccessful launch of our Samat missile. Well, and there is enough of everything else. This shooting in Moscow, the open conflict between the Kadyrov and Kerimov clans. You yourself understand that the North Caucasus can vibrate there. All this begins with a breakthrough of the Ukrainian armed forces to Kursk, or even with the sinking of a cruiser, Moscow, from the failures of 2022. It reminds me not of victory, but of a series of catastrophes and failures that began in the Soviet Union in 1986. Complete déjà vu, Kalashnikov said. He added that Russia was facing a crisis of governance as a result of negative personnel selection in Russia's top leadership. With such a state apparatus, wars are not won. The state system is becoming a collective moron. What follows may simply be disintegration. Either the government makes very significant, non-trivial efforts to win, or we will have to prepare for the worst, the Z propagandist declared. Among the thousands of North Korean soldiers who were brought to Russia, there are, according to intelligence, special forces who were trained under a special training program. No one knows how strong these North Korean special forces are. It now looks like false advertising when they talk about the best product, and in the small print it says that this is the conclusion of some unknown study. We are told that the North Korean special forces are supposedly great, but no one has seen them in combat since 1953, that is, since the end of the Korean War. According to Ukrainian military expert Ivan Stupak, perhaps they are the best in their specific location. And if we compare them with the Ukrainian ones who are already experienced and how to work in war conditions, I do not think that the North Korean military will turn the tide in Russia's favor, but in a specific area due to their numbers like meat, they can cause trouble. If we talk about reinforcing the Kursk region with 12,000 North Korean troops, then this could be bad for us. But it will definitely not be like in the movies where they come and kill everyone. The expert added. He says that we do not know how much Russia paid for these North Korean soldiers, what the conditions of their use were. Was it about training? 
when they would be in the third to fourth line of defense, staying in the second line of defense, or perhaps their limited participation in combat. It cannot be ruled out that the dictators of the North Korea and Russia have come to an agreement that the aggressor country will take these 12,000 people, pay for their lives as much as possible, and use them as it sees fit, he said. South Korean MP Lee Song Kwai said that the North Korea is trying to keep quiet about sending troops to support Russia in the war against Ukraine. Allegedly, the North Korean authorities are moving and isolating the families of these troops in a certain place in order to effectively control them and thoroughly deal with rumors. Ivan Stupak says that this is a normal story for the North Korea. This is an attempt to put pressure on soldiers and force them not to run away, not to surrender, but to shoot themselves, swallow poison, so as not to subject their relatives to repression. If someone there runs away to South Korea, then his relatives will be repressed, up to the fourth generation. That is, if the North Korean military is used on the battlefield, then the Russians will get zombies that will be driven forward. The military from the North Korea will have something to lose. They will understand what this threatens for their relatives, he said. Ukrainian Marines and paratroopers, supported by M-1 tanks, created a road of death for Russian troops, in particular, for the Russian 155th Marine Brigade, in the vicinity of Zeleny Shlyak in the Kursk region. As Forbes analyst David Axe writes, this is the result of a retaliatory operation by the Ukrainian armed forces for the shooting of nine Ukrainian drone operators. A quartet of Ukrainian formations, the 36th Marine Brigade, the 47th Mechanized Brigade, and the 82nd and 95th Airborne Assault Brigades, have turned a short stretch of highway in Russia's Kursk region into a road of death, the article says. On October 18, paratroopers from the 95th Air Assault Brigade routed a group of Russians in armored personnel carriers, destroying three armored personnel carriers and killing 30 Russians. Last week, the 47th Mechanized Brigade attacked Russian Marines in Novoivanovka, near Zeleny Shlyak, using M-1 tanks and M-2 combat vehicles. Meanwhile, Ukrainian forces entered Zeleny Shlyak from the south with a column of T-64 tanks and M-113 armored personnel carriers, blowing up Russian vehicles on the move, and also attacked from the west, killing seven sappers from the 155th Marine Brigade, AKS notes. The result over the past two weeks has been a graveyard of destroyed Russian equipment worth tens of millions of dollars on the main road through Zeleny Shlyak. Analysts have found at least 17 destroyed Russian armored trucks, armored personnel carriers and tanks in the Zeleny Shlyak area, the article notes. At the same time, the Ukrainians do not appear to have lost a single unit of armored vehicles in their recent counterattacks, writes AKS. At the same time, he notes that reinforcements will soon come to the Russian troops in Kursk, in particular, the first of many batches of North Korean soldiers will arrive any day now. The New York Times wrote that in recent days, Russian troops have stepped up efforts to push Ukrainian troops out of the Kursk region, and this is leading to a reduction in the territory controlled by Ukraine. At the same time, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of Ukraine Alexander Swarsky denied Putin's statement that Ukrainian troops in the Kursk region are surrounded. According to him, Ukrainian fighters continue active operations in the Kursk direction, and, despite the enormous pressure of the enemy in this direction, the occupiers are suffering significant losses in personnel and military equipment. As General Valery Romanenko noted, in order to push Ukrainian defense forces to the borders in Kursk, Russia, according to various estimates, needs from 80 to 120,000 troops. Therefore, soldiers from the North Korea are being transferred to Kursk, among other things.